spend so much of your time like really trying to like break these records and be a part of the sports history at the end of the day you forget that you're not living in the now you're so living in the future and you're so living about what people are going to think about you when you're dead and you forget that now is important and for me I just want to be a great father I think that's when you know what your role is in life because a lot of athletes a lot of people love them because they don't know who they are and it's really it's when your family loves you more than anything that you find out who you really are. And I think that's important to me because at the end of the day, I don't want people to be like, well, he had the most sacks in Seahawks history. I want them to say, damn, that motherfucker was a great father. Did you see the way that he <laughs> played with his daughter? Did you see the way he coached his daughter's teams? Did you see he never missed a recital? He did everything to be right for his family. And that's what that's the only legacy I care about, really. Michael Bennett, it's been a revelation. I've had a lot of fun talking to you. Thank, Thank you. Man, I appreciate it. Don't vote for Trump. You're listening to the MMQB Podcast. Now, I'm going to tell you about an experience I had with one of the great partners we have on the MMQB Podcast with Peter King, and that is me actually downloading an app, me, dinosaur me, downloading the SeatGeek app onto my phone and actually buying tickets to a Pirates-Mets game this year. I mean, if I can do this, you can do it. So let me tell you about SeatGeek. You know it can be a hassle getting a seat to a game or a concert, especially for a good price. That's why the best place to go, I've found, is SeatGeek when you need tickets. It's so easy. They pull all the tickets available on other sites into one place. You save time. You never miss a deal. You can even set alerts for upcoming events. They'll let you know if those ticket prices fall. Even better, every ticket on SeatGeek is ranked based on value. You can immediately find underpriced seats to any game or concert. You can also use SeatGeek's detailed maps to see the view from your seat. Best of all, SeatGeek is always honest. They show you the full ticket price from start to finish. No trickeration on the huge fees on checkout page. Now, pay attention to this next part because it's really important. My listeners get a $20 rebate off their first SeatGeek purchase. 20 bucks, free. And to get it, all you have to do is this. Download the free SeatGeek app, go to the Settings tab, and click Add a Promo Code. Then, enter promo code MMQB. SeatGeek will then send you $20 after you've made your first purchase. It just doesn't get any easier. So download that free SeatGeek app and enter promo code MMQB today. Now, back to the show. See, I told you it wouldn't be boring with Michael Bennett. Now it's not going to be boring with Vince Wilfork either. I met him in Houston during training camp, and Wilfork, I only talked to him for, I don't know, 10 or 11 minutes, but I could have sat there for two hours. So Vince Wilfork, you have made your way to Houston after a lifetime in New England. I have to ask you this. How do you take this heat? You know, I, I, the heat is not a problem, to be honest with you. Um, growing up in Florida, you know, all my life I've been in it. I mean, it's a different heat than Florida, and I spent 11 years in New England. But in the offseason, I always get back home and um, be in Florida and be in the heat and stuff. So it, it definitely gets hot, i tell you that. But um, it's not an issue, you know. I think, you know, dealing with the weather is something I can't control. So I kind of, you know, really never pay any attention. And I hear a lot of guys always talking about it or when we had practice and the heat index and all that stuff. But – to me is, you know, when I'm when I'm working, I'm working. And I love sweating. So if I was one of those guys that don't like to sweat, it'll be a problem. So I'm good with it. I'm going to ask you two questions about history. What are your memories and what are the lessons you take from having worked with Bill Belichick for so long? You know what? Just being with Bill for 11 years, it's just the details, how he approaches the game. And – a lot of people don't understand that that he's a a great person. You know, it's it's more than football. You know, with Bill, I mean, he's a great coach. But you know, I've gotten the chance over the years to get to know him as a person, and I mean, he understands a lot of things. He's very caring. That's one thing that I always took away from me having conversations with him and being able to juggle a team. You know, you have different personalities, different characters. You have to know each one of your players. And I think Bill do a real good job of that. I think a great coach understands that with football and without football. So 
a lot of people are intimidated just because of what they see on TV when I'm coaching. But the Bill Belichick I know off the field is an awesome person. And I will always, you know, know him and remember him by that. I just think a lot of times people don't understand that because he don't have a lot of people that's really close to him or get a chance to see that side of him. But he tell you all the time, if you ever have an issue, you know, if it's about football or not about football, you my door is always open. And my first part of my career, you know, I was – I was one of those ones who was scared to walk by that office or if he say something to me, it's like, oh, man, what did I do? But over the years, you know, um, I used that door a lot throughout my career. And I think the more players can understand who he is as a person, the better, you know, they'll get a chance to know who he is. So, How have you retained this really positive attitude toward him even though he chose not to re-sign you? And that had to hurt a little bit to know that – the Patriots uh, were not going to aggressively try to re-sign you. You know what? Business is business. I think when my first contract was up, you know, I kind of took it personal how the negotiations was going. And then, um, you know, I had to really sit back and put myself in their shoes. If I had a team and an organization to run, how would I run it? And it's not about one individual. And, and once I came to terms with understanding that, I could deal with anything. So when when they chose not to pick it up, I understood it was a it was a business decision. It was no hard feelings, um, and I didn't take it that way. You know, I, I love them guys. You know, from the Kraft family to Bill Belichick and his kids, um, my teammates, you know, the fans. You know, I, I love them because it was eleven years, eleven great years I spent in New England. Won a lot of games, won Super Bowls, been in a lot of football games, being in football games in the weather. I mean. You know, it's the only things you think about growing up when you see history of football. You you always kind of see the Chicago Bears and the Packers in snow with them, with them breathing. And you can see, the, you know, their breath and stuff. So I got a chance to live out that. And you know what? That's football. Um, but I took nothing personal because at the end of the day, it's, it's business. Everybody got to understand that this is a business. There will be guys, you know, before me. It was guys before me. It's going to be guys after me. But – uh, it was tough on their, their end also, and I understood that. But at the end of the day, um, I have no hard feelings. I never will. I love them guys to death. They gave me my first job. And they gave me an opportunity to come there and win with them, and we had a lot of fun. When you look at Tom Brady and your relationship with Brady over the years, what's something about Brady that people may not know? You know what? As a quarterback and being the face of an organization – um, sometimes you can get a bunch of a-holes. You know, some guys can probably think that they're better than others just because of who they are. But I tell you, he's one of my all-time favorite players and teammates because Tom would hang out with us. Tom would, um, you know, go to dinner with us. I mean, he would be a true teammate, you know, even though he's the poster child and, he, you know, Giselle, his wife, and all that stuff. He never let that get to who he really is. And he cares so much about his teammates and players. So uh, a lot of people that always ask me, how is Tom? What he's like? And I tell him all the time, I'm like, he's down to earth. I mean, he is one of the best uh, teammates I've had and one of the best friends I've had. Been yeah, Having a chance to play with him was a blessing for me. You know, and I can always sit back and remember the Super Bowls we won together, the, you know, the, the time we put in just to watch him work at practice. That's one of the – that's one of the memories I will always have. Just watch a guy like Tom Brady, uh, the best quarterback in the game. Um, and I think in history, I got a chance to watch him work in practice. And he never took a day lightly. He never took it for granted. I mean, it's a reason he's that good because um, he worked. He, he's very competitive. So um, I love him like a brother. Finishing up with Vince Wilfork. Vince, so you get here. And you've got J.J. Watt. And I wonder, any common threads between Tom Brady and J.J. Watt? Capetta. How Capetta they are. I mean, I get a chance. It's crazy because I go from one spectrum to the next with a Tom Brady, and now all of a sudden I'm next to J.J. Watt. And having a front row seat to watch what make him great, you know, is how he worked, how he carried himself on and off the field what he do off the field with charities and the community. Um, but just to watch him day in and day out, 
grind. You know, that's one thing. You see it when coaches get on you. You, you pick up practice. and But that's someone that you never have to tell, you know, when it's time to work, it's work time because he walk around like that. Everything he do, he, he want to be the best. And that's the, one of the similar things I see between him and Tom. No matter what they're doing, they want to be the best at what they do. So, But it comes with a competitive edge. And I think, you know, to be in this level, you have to be very competitive. You're in an absolutely wide open division. I have no idea who's going to win this division. Why do you think your team can win this division? I personally, I just think nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. But I think we have pieces. If we continue to put them together, I think we'll be tough. We will be tough. Our goal is to win the division. Playing is simple. Our goal is to have a first round by in the playoffs. That's our goal. You know, we all play this game for one reason, and it's to win the Super Bowl. That's, I mean, that is what it is. By the way, the Super Bowl's in Houston. It's home. So <laughs> it would be nice to be in it, but it's going to take a lot of work. I mean, nothing's going to be given to us. So we got to be able to, day in and day out, win ball games, win the tough games, um, win the games that we're supposed to win. And there's going to be some games where we have to go on the road or, or play a tough opponent where we're going to have to count on everyone, not just one person. So we all going to have to step our game up. So I think as long as we keep our, our mental edge, we're going to always have a chance. Vince Wilfork, thanks for joining me on my podcast. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. This is the MMQB Podcast. You know, it's pretty difficult as an interviewer if you ever get a bad interview with Michael Bennett or Vince Wilfork. I think that's probably the impression that both of those guys just left you because when I walked away from each guy, that's basically what I said. How can you screw up this interview? So, last thing for this week just two thoughts on teams that, to me, are the most fascinating teams entering this season. And they're going to be teams that have been professionally under the radar in the last three, four, five years. In the case of the Oakland Raiders, in the last decade, they have stunk. And when I visited the Raiders during training camp, there was one difference between this year and almost every other year I've been there recently. And that is There isn't just this kind of, well, if everything goes right, we're going to win. I mean, Jack Del Rio, the head coach of this team, now has sort of drilled it into their heads that, all right, guys, the JV portion of our careers is over. Now, we're going to win, and we're going to win right away this year. So this team that you're going to see for the first time in New Orleans this weekend I believe is going to be a very difficult team to stop on offense. I think they've got a very good running game with Latavius Murray. They've got a great young quarterback in Derek Carr, a franchise receiver in Amari Cooper. The offensive line worries me some, but I think it's good enough. It also worries me that they don't have a great complement to Khalil Mack on defense. Khalil Mack, to me, Uh, is going to be a great player for the next eight or ten years in the NFL if he stays healthy. He's already a superb football player and a multiple threat rusher. So I like Oakland a lot. The other team, and unfortunately it's in the AFC, I'd like to have symmetry and say there's one team in the NFC that I absolutely love. But there's a team in the AFC too uh, that I love. I'm picking the Jacksonville Jaguars to win the AFC South. I'm doing that because when I visited Jacksonville, I saw so much young talent on that defense. And particularly, I'm just really fascinated with Miles Jack. Now, remember this story around draft time when Miles Jack basically is a linebacker from UCLA. He might have been the first pick in the draft, but suffered a severe knee injury. And so many teams in the NFL took him off their board. They were afraid of him. I saw Miles Jack in training camp. He can turn and run superbly right now, Uh, has no pain. I think he's going to have a very, very good rookie year. I think he's going to play at least 60 65% of the defensive snaps. Jacksonville is going to be a really interesting test tube to watch this year. They already are an explosive offense. So I think that they have a really good chance not only to make the playoffs, but to win a playoff game in January. 
Anyway, my two surprise teams there are going to be Oakland and Jacksonville. 